Welcome back to the Fathom Family Podcast. Uh, We are on part two of our Parent Real Talk series. And uh, if you haven't had a chance yet to listen to part one, go back and listen to it before you listen to part two. We really dive into the topic and and really what we want you to uh, understand during this, um, these sessions. And really the main focus of it is that we're not perfect parents. Uh, We use an illustration of giraffes walking on ice. And if you've ever seen a giraffe before, uh, they're the most friendly of all the wild animals, but they're also the goofiest looking. Uh, they were just walking on hard ground. They look like they're just lumbering, and we really just think that you could push them over. Um, now picture them on ice. Uh, that's really what parenting is. Parenting is clumsy. And uh, for part two, we're going to dive into a little bit of what are the of some of the parental perfectionisms we might have in our own life. Uh, we got to remember that we're not perfect that uh, we can be good enough for our kids without being perfect uh, with the help of the Lord. And so I just want to dive into a couple ways that, a a couple stances really of parent perfectionism, if you will. And that first one is achievement focused. These are the parents that uh, they tend to, all out of love, they just want their kids to be um, their best self, if you will. And so their whole I, whole concept of parenting is all around achievement. Like, you can do this, you can achieve this, you can achieve this. And it comes from a place of, like I said, they, they really do uh, love their children, but they have these ideas of who their children are meant to be. And so they really try to force them to fit into this mold that they've created for them. Um, to quote the book, it says, if I give my children the right ingredients and they do their part, then their lives will be ideally happy as I, as a parent, define it and wish for it to be. And so these are the parents, I think of the movies, it's always like the sports dad in the movies. That's just like, he comes to his kid's football game, uh, it's usually a son in the, in the movies, and um, he's like, the kid has a great game, but he dropped that one pass. And so the, the, the dad is like, you're not good enough because you dropped that one pass. Sometimes that's, that's a very extreme example of this achievement-focused uh, idea of parent perfectionism. But um, it kind of gives a, a very extreme view of what this really is. This is just somebody, they, they love their kid, they love their child, but they're so focused on the achievements that they think they should have that they forget about the heart of the kid and, and their heart. And this really is coming from a place of imperfection in their self. If their kid, they view their kid as if, hey, if, this, if my child can be like this, then I've done a good job as a parent. And it's just, it's a stance of parent perfectionism that uh, is very real. And like I said, these are examples of very extreme, I mean, it might not be uh, as extreme as these. It could just be subtle and simple. Um, Another stance of parent perfectionism would be comfort focused. Um, I, coming from a place who leans more towards achievement focused, (laughs) just to be honest, I try not to be, but that is sometimes where I can be uh, as a person um, comfort focus is, is hard for me to wrap my mind around, and, and you might be somebody, but this is really um, somebody who the world needs to be perfect for their child. Uh, it's really the flip side of achievement focus. Instead of my child needs to be perfect for this world, it's the world needs to be perfect for my child. Again, to quote the book, it says, these parents give their children over to a world in which the children are God. The world needs to change for them, and they have few to no boundaries that it would allow them to feel and process their feelings in healthy way as real life occurs. Again, this is another uh, focus um, and stance that comes from a place that they just love their kid. And they just love their child. And, but at the same time, it's damaging to the child because, well, we're, just, we're not setting them up um, to, to have a good life. The, li- the world has to um, really revolve around them. And it's another thing where a parent is basically saying, you know, it, it's out of love, but it's out of this perfectionism where I'm a good parent if the world doesn't hurt my child. And both, like I said, both of, these, uh, both of these focuses come from a place of love for their child, but really what they're doing is they're idealizing their child. And so this is, parents usually will float, you know, kind of ping pong between these different focuses and stances, but it's, it's out of this, this ideal of like, hey, my, my child is the best child in the world, and my child is, I love my kids, so I need to make this world to be uh, the best for them, or I need to make my child to be the best for this world. And when thinking about it and studying about it, this really comes from a place of parental insecurities. I think that we uh, as parents can easily have an insecurity based on where what's happened in our own lives, uh, based on, again, this idea of who we believe our child should be or how the world should be towards our children. 
And so we can easily look at our kids and just be like, I don't want you to have the life I had. I want you to have a better life and a perfect life because we think that's attainable. <laughs> and so we try to fit them into this mold of, and, and focus on these perfectionisms that we can control. And the reality is this is just a lack of trust in God. Um, we really should be parenting through our trust in God. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Um, my wife uh, comes from a family that very much loves to garden. Uh, her, her mother and her grandmother, uh, they both have, like, they all grow their own herbs and spices, and they grow their own peppers, and whatever they can grow in their backyard, they're going to try to grow. And my wife has started to pick that up a little bit, where she wants to um, grow some plants. Um, and the reality is that we have quickly, quickly learned that if they don't get water, they die. If you didn't know that. If plants don't get water, uh, they will die. And the amount of water really just depends on the type of plant. Well, as parents, we need a ton of water. We need to be filled up and filled up and filled up. And this scripture just does such a great job of explaining what it means like to put our trust in God. When our trust and confidence is in the Lord, it says that we're like a plant or a, a tree planted by a stream. Um, you know, and I can't help but think of when I think of streams as like a fast flowing stream of just constantly moving, constantly, constant water supply. And so that's the picture I have in my head um, of this tree just sitting next to that. And then like it's not raining for days and days and days and days and weeks. But this tree is doing just fine because, well, it's got a stream right next to it. So its roots are getting saturated. And that saturation of the roots comes from trust in God and confidence in God, who God is. Um, we all have different needs that we have as people and as parents. We definitely have a ton of needs. Um, and so the book uh, gives us five roots that make up the emotional and spiritual characteristics of human beings. So five roots that make up the emotional and spiritual characteristics of human beings. Feelings, needs, desires, longings, and hope. The heart of all these characteristics that I just gave you, feelings, needs, desires, longings, and hope, at the heart of all of these characteristics is the need to be affirmed and confirmed. Well, what does that look for, like for us as parents? Well, it looks, in, it looks like our, our trust and confidence in God, that we actually need relationship with other people. We need relationships with other people. But the thing about God is, and what's so great about our God, is he actually uses human beings to help us. Like, God wants to use you to help other people, and God uses other people to help you. And so uh, we have this need for deep relationships. Um, it's very evident. Even in Genesis, you see that um, God creates Adam, and he's like, okay, he needs somebody else. Like, he needs somebody with him. He needs Eve, and so he creates Eve. And so I think it's easy to feel like we can do this all on our own. We can go and we can be the perfect parent. We can't, as we learned in the first uh, session. But the reality is we, we are, have a desperate need for deep relationships people to call us out when we're trying to be too perfect for our kids, people to be there and comfort us when we're just going through something difficult as parents in, in how we're raising up our child. And our kids need the same thing. Whether it's, if it's not from us, it's going to be from friends, but really our job is to focus them and point them towards Christ. But the reality is, if our roots are dry, we have nothing to pour out to others. If we're not planted by a stream, our roots are going to dry up when hard times come. When your kid comes home from school crying because something happened and you're filled with all this rage and you don't know what to do, take a deep breath, stop. First off, from, from the first session, uh, the challenge I gave everyone was to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and then realize that, hey, I've got to be planted by a stream. I have to have trust in God and confidence in who he is that I don't have to try to fix everything when it comes to my child. If, if, they, if they get a bad grade at school, or if they don't make the sports team that we wanted them to make, we can sit back and say, okay, that's all right. God's got this. They don't have to be the highest achiever in the world to still be a child that is focused on God and going to live a great life. 
when the world hurts them, when they have friends that bully them uh, or people that pick on them or things like, things like that, when bad things happen in their life, we can realize that, hey, the reality is the world is not going to always be a comfortable place. Um, just like a tree planted by a stream, like sometimes a hurricane's coming. We in Florida know about that, and the, br- the branches might get bent, and sometimes a drought comes, but if we have our trust and confidence in God, our roots are still going to be saturated, and our hope can still be built on something besides just what the world has to offer us. And so we need to point them in that direction. We need to point our children in this direction that, hey, the world's not perfect, but when you have trust and confidence in God, you're going to be okay. We need to build that. We need to help them build their root system. Um, and, and really, we can look at what the author gives us. We can, we can speak to their feelings. That's, a, that's something that's very important as a parent. We want to speak to their feelings, know how they're feeling about things. We obviously need to speak to their needs. Um, like I, I said in the first session, I've got a, a child that's three months old. He has a lot of needs. He has a lot of needs. And the reality is the needs change as children grow. Um, but they will always have needs. We can look at their desires, and we're going to get into that a little bit um, in session four, but we can look at their desires, their longings, and, ha- and, and, and their hope, and all of these things we can really point them towards, but the most important thing is that we point them to Christ, and that we give them an opportunity for their roots to just grow and grow and grow in confidence uh, in Christ and trust in God, and to do so, we have to first do that ourselves. We have to first trust God in every circumstance and it's hard to do that when you're not paying attention to God in your life. How can you trust God when you don't really know him that well? I use this example all the time um, when I'm teaching with students that our relationship with God is so similar to a relationship um, with a spouse. And if I don't pay any attention to my wife, I promise you our relationship is not going to grow. If I don't pay attention to her in a way that really is intimacy, it's um, and the book describes intimacy as into me you see, <laughs> which is such a great way to wrap your head around that um, idea of, of intimacy. Well, we're supposed to have intimacy with God. We're supposed to have a relationship with God. And if I completely ignore him, never pray, never worship him, um, well, the reality is um, I'm probably not going to trust him as much. And I'm probably not going to have as much confidence in God. And so th- those are really our first steps. And it, it, sounds, uh, it can sound very churchy, if you will, to say you need to pray and read your Bible more. But the reality is we need to grow in our relationship with God if we're going to be parents um, that are focused around uh, what God has for us. If we want to have saturated roots, well, we've got to give the Lord some roots to saturate. <laughs> we've got to. And, so, um, and that's what we want for all of you. And so um, my challenge uh, for this second part for all of you is to really just take an introspective look at yourself and say, do I trust God? Am I trying to make the world perfect for my child? Am I trying to make my child perfect for the world? Get rid of those perfectionisms. Take a look at at your own life and say, do I trust God? And if you don't, that's like the the first step is to to realize that. And then um, we really need to, to just really focus on a relationship with God. And I would say don't even go into the next sessions until, until you've got that part worked out. Begin to really pray and ask God, hey, speak to my heart. Speak to, speak to this problem that I've got in my soul because I don't trust like I should. And I don't have confidence. And as we grow in confidence and trust in God, our roots are going to saturate. And we're going to be able to see, hey, when things get rough with our child, um, we can still have trust and confidence in God. And, uh, and, and that's my really my challenge for you in this part two. Please join us uh, for part three uh, of this uh, Parent Real Talk on Fathom Family podcast. Uh, we know that this is just such great information um, that we really just want to resource you with. Uh, if you haven't um, purchased this book as well, it's called Parenting with Heart. You can get it at our resource center. Uh, you can get it online. Um, there's also an audio uh, version as well that is very helpful if you're somebody who likes to uh, listen <laughs> to um instead of reading a book it's something that can be very helpful for you um you're definitely going to want to tune in uh for part uh, session two part two and um uh session two part one as well one usually comes before two um so you'll definitely want to listen in on those um and we'll see you on the next session